Speaking of Galway and Mayo, they meet this weekend, Kevin McStay's first proper match, I suppose. And when we spoke before Christmas, we kind of talked about, you know, there was all the distractions, all the, you know, the big names that were in the background. We obviously have Lee Keegan gone, Oshin Mullen gone. And like now it's time for the actual football. What are you expecting from Mayo this weekend? Well, you know, funny enough, and we were talking about the pre-season competitions there earlier on, the FBD League uh, um, encounter above in the Dome a couple of weeks ago certainly has a bearing because I know uh, going into that game, everybody had huge question marks over Mayo. They're a team in transition. You know, over the last 10, 12, 14 years, Mayo have built their success and their foundation of their success on tight man-marking athletic defenders. They're all gone. Colin Boyle, Keith Higgins, you know, uh, Lee, Roy, Lee Keegan, Oshin Mullen, Chris Barrett, Donny Bohan. Jerk Harfake, all gone. So that was our platform. Of course, we have Paddy Durkin still there who had gives us that drive and momentum, but there's huge pressure on one or two guys now. So there's a huge question mark over Mayo. But notwithstanding what I've just said there in relation to the pressure, that FBD game encounter, I know a couple of guys who went back to Galway scratching their head and said, my God, you know, um, Mayo are not that bad. I feel here as we get closer to Saturday's game now, Shane Walsh is not obviously going to be playing. I don't know what the story is with the Sigerson boys, Matthew Tierney and the Kellys from, um, uh, from Mike Cullen, who are playing with uh, NUI Galway. So I'm not sure if they're available. But right now, there's a bit of a shift. I think the odds reflect that. People are getting more and more confident uh, that uh, Mayo will pull off a, game, um, a result here in Castle Bar. I'm expecting maybe 12,000 people here on Saturday evening. The weather is good. Huge appetite for football. That's the way the league has gone. A couple of years ago, you know, you, you, might, you might have three, 4,000 at a, a game of that na nature. Right now, there's great interest, live TV. It's the big game of the weekend. I'm expecting a Mayo, a, a Mayo victory, a, a, a close one, um, particularly without Shane Walsh. And as I say, question marks about a few others. I think uh, uh, Porrick uh, Joyce has a number of, uh, of um, injuries in this camp as well. Mayo have a young team, huge, we're talking about pressure, big pressure on that Mayo management team. Like, I mean... You know, I recall a number of years ago uh, watching the standing um, in Hogan Stand, looking at, I think I counted 14 in the backroom team uh, with the Dublin squad at the time, and I was just shaking my head saying, where is, this, where is this going? I think right now we have 22 or 23 involved in the backroom team with Mayo. They've doubled up on physios, they've doubled up on strength and conditioning, doubled up on medical staff. The resources are enormous. I mean, and to put that package together has... Well, I, I, I dare I say it, it's cost a lot of money because even expenses alone. So there's huge pressure on Kevin. He wanted the job desperately. I think, uh, you know, will we contest uh, Mayo, that is, for an all Ireland title this year? I don't think so. But certainly this is a year where they, he will be hoping for a very, very good league. Hopefully, um, uh, I mean, a provincial title and maybe a good run uh, into the top eight and building for the future. That's what I expect. Yeah, there's been talk of Conor Loftus playing at number six. I'm just wondering, how has he done there? And are there any other players that have really stepped up so far? And I know it's only early days. It is. I, I, I watched Conor. I saw him playing against Sligo um, down in Ballina on the 2nd of January. I was quite surprised to see Conor playing at six. Um, uh, you know, and he's from my hometown, Cross Malina, and I know his lineage and his DNA exceptionally well. And as a minor uh, footballer, another 20 footballer, Conor Loftus was huge exciting prospect i think it's fair to say most people would agree with me that he hasn't really delivered on the that youthful promise that he had um and that he showed back then um and maybe six is a is a place that we might find him obviously we're stuck for a six we're stuck for a three so we've got to be experimenting there but kind of after us i know talking to one or two of the, the the players his colleagues indicated that he was playing exceptionally well in training uh, against Sligo, Sligo was a non-entity. I was uh, hugely disappointed with Sligo, incidentally. Having watched them in the Tarchin Cup semi-final against Cavan, I thought, wow, these Sligo boys can play sparking football. And they did in Crow Park on that occasion. Looking at them on the 2nd of January, I said, hey, Tony McEntee, you've got some job in your hand here to get these guys moving because they just com look completely out of sorts, albeit it was the 2nd of January. But what I got um, on, uh, from that game was, Mayo were streets ahead in their uh, um, athletic ability, in the preparation they had done. Will Conor Loftus be a success at six? I didn't see enough on that occasion to suggest that he will, but he, I, I suspect he'll be tried there because he's a very good um, reader of the game. He's lots of experience there. And it's an interesting uh, one for sure. One we'll watch with interest, yeah. Mm, Michael? John, I'm just wondering about the mood in Mayo at the moment. Um, with 
with Lee Keegan obviously retiring and Ushie Mullen moving away and a new management team coming in, the new management team obviously pressure comes with that. But is there a little bit less pressure just uh, when you go through all the personnel that are not there, all those kind of legendary names that are now gone? Like, wh- what's the what are the realistic expectations of Mayo supporters? And is there a little less pressure on Kevin McStay now, maybe compared to when he stepped into the job when he had all those players available to him? Well, the one thing you know, we're talking about the, the the seismic shift in the whole approach to Gaelic football over the last number of years and how it, where it's moved to. The one thing we have, we've discovered as well, I've discovered. Supporters don't do patience. They want results now. And everybody wants to be in the winner's enclosure. Mayo supporters won't do patience. Uh, they look at this big management team and they're looking at this management team to deliver. They're not, they're looking to say, wow, look, I mean, we've got Donnie Bucky back, we've got Stephen Ross, we've got Lee McHale there. All those guys are um, putting their shoulder to the wheel. So the focus has been um, in the early days was all on the management. I should look at, hey, how could we lose? I mean, this is what we were looking for. Look at the dream team. And I heard Porik O'Hora being interviewed yesterday at the launch of the Alliance National League. And to hear the excitement in his voice, I watched it on social media last night. And to hear the excitement in his voice talking about the new management team, albeit he's out injured at the moment. I saw him wearing uh, um, an ankle boot that day down in, in Balana on the 2nd of January. But, uh, there's um there's there'll always be pressure on Mayo. Mayo, like I mean, have one have one of the big teams of the country. They're in the top two or three, four in the last 10, 12, 14 years and have provided great excitement. The thing about watching Mayo, even though I'm talking about my own county, you're almost guaranteed value for money when you watch a Mayo team play. Like mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to you know, uh, talk uh, um, poorly about you know, styles of football and looking at maybe a few teams up north who, who play that very ultra defensive style of football. Mayo don't do that. The play were kind of a, a reckless abandon, toe-to-toe, and that's why we had such sparkling games. And it was referred to um, in lots of uh, uh, recent weeks about uh, Jim O'Connolly and Lee Keegan because they were just awesome performances, they were awesome occasions. There is pressure on Mayo to, yeah, I mean, as I say, expectations always be high. Division one status is absolutely critical uh, for a developing team. He's got to re- retain a, a division one. I mean, after a bad start here, um, at the weekend, a home game, you've got to win the four home games, so you would feel they will be safe enough. They should be safe to survive in Division 1. I think that's important. I think we, we certainly want, I'm not going to win the National League. I think um, a provincial title will be critical for this uh, uh, young team in transition, building for the future. So if it gets off to a rocky start, away to our man uh, round two, I wouldn't like to be in Kevin's shoes. But anyway, <laughs> I just, that's, that's the excitement. Would you be fearful that Galway are going to kick on to another gear again uh, after such a successful run in 2023-22? I, you know, funny enough, I'm not so sure. I, I, I am not so sure. I mean, the last couple of all Ireland titles, in, 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 uh, when you contrast it with what had went on with the previous six, seven, eight or nine all Ireland uh, titles, I think they were handy enough. I think that last year uh, was a handy enough year to win an all Ireland title. Uh, the previous year... Mayo, uh, I think it, it, people would suggest fouled up going into that um, or on final against Tyrone. Everybody would have expected him to have beaten Dublin. This was the year. It didn't happen for them. They underperformed alarmingly. But uh, I'm not so sure about uh, uh, Galway. It's critical. That, that, like, I mean, the likes of Comer and Walsh lose one or two one, injuries uh, I mean, to a, a top player. Like, I mean, we saw Tommy Conroy get injured. And, like, I mean, he weakened our team. He was such an exciting uh, direct uh, uh, forward. And, uh, He's critical. He was critical to Mayo. So if if the likes of uh, um, Shane Walsh got injured, uh, even though I saw an interview with him yesterday where he said he'd never felt better, he's he's uh, you know he's mentally uh, stressed. He said, but physically he feels in great shape. No injuries, no niggling injuries. So he'll take a rest for the National League. So this would be a little a difficult couple of weeks for for Galway if they were to lose here at the weekend. They might be under a little bit of pressure with Six and Cup and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the my Cullen boys, the Kelly's been a little bit drained after their long club season. So I'm not so sure we'll go and kick on this year. I think uh, it might be a, a year to maybe to consolidate. Look, will Peter Cook come back? I don't know. He, I mean, he would certainly add weight to their. He's back on board by all accounts. Yeah, he's back say, on board well, Peter, by all accounts. Yeah. Peter Cook, like I mean, watched him in the club campaign. A super footballer, very very talented. Ian Brooke is back in the squad. If they he were to get uh, Barry from New York, suddenly. Yeah, now you're beginning to look, and there's a bit of sparkle about them. But uh, no, last year they they, um, they surprised me in, in many ways, um, you know, and they've got a certain a bit of momentum. But I'm not too sure will they kick on. I'm not, I'm looking at the Derrys, I'm looking at the Armas, 
I'm looking at Cork. I'm looking at other teams that will drive on. And just right now, Galway for me are just a little bit below the top four or five. I could be, I could be wrong.